Islam's making headway, guys. He really is. The one thing with Islam, Makhlchev, and it sounds like such a condescending statement when I make it, which is just simply that people don't know what an Islam is. They just don't know what an Islam Makhlchev is. They don't associate fighter. They don't associate Khabib's protege. They don't associate UFC or mixed martial arts or beautiful record or top six guy. That's going to change. I know that that's going to change. So I don't feel like a jerk when I identify this for you. I, I'm telling you that because it's going to be fun to watch the strategy and the manipulation done by Islam and his team as they get through the media and they make him a known guy. They make him interesting. There's huge things that Islam has. Like if I had to sit around and design a character that I had to bring to television and get over with you guys, I wouldn't have the built-in mechanisms that Islam has. I wouldn't have Khabib vouching for me. I wouldn't have Daniel Cormier vouching for me. I wouldn't have Coach Javier Mendez, who trained Khabib and is in the room with me, saying Islam's better than Khabib and saying it publicly. All the street cred in the world is going to Islam right now. But there is a game, and it's not only the one that Islam has to play, to be interesting and to be relevant, to take all of the pieces that he's being given and to use that to get something. It's also up to his enemies to stop that momentum. And I'm seeing Chandler and Gaethje, who appear to be in a number one contender's fight, this has never been stated as a number one contender's fight. Nobody has ever said that. We, the audience, all believed that could be true, particularly based on the outcome of the actual title fight that we've got scheduled between Charlie Olives and Dustin Poirier. You could have some real interesting parody there. You could also have a rematch if everything goes that you want to stay away from, which is why I believe this fight has never officially been said to be a number one contender's fight. I think we got to just go to what Dana White defers to, to every single press conference he's ever held, which is, let's see what happens. I think that's why you've got to always, let's see what happens. Things change quickly. But to let Islam in to the conversation when he's not even in the country, let alone on the card, is a big miss. Justin Gaethje came out today, and Justin Gaethje said, if I don't get a title fight with a victory over Chandler, I'm going to riot because I ain't got a whole lot of time left here. I loved everything Gaethje had to say except for the part that's true. And why guys would bring truth into a story, I will never understand. Justin Gaethje does not have a lot of time left. He's talking about how many fights he can still do. And if he thinks that that is going to help him, to get something or gain something on his side, he's of course wrong. Fans are not looking to cling to somebody that isn't going to be here for a while. Pundits are not looking to do stories on something that is just about to fade to black and roll the credits. And the promoter most certainly is not going to get behind a guy that doesn't have a shelf life. I loved everything that Gaethje was saying, except for adding that. And when he talks about, I may not get a title fight, the only thing he's referring to is Islam, who a week ago was not even in the conversation. And now Islam, who is not in the country, is being spoke about in the media mecca of the world, known as New York City. Islam has a game and a strategy that he must play. The other guys must keep him out and keep their narrative going up. Chandler and Gaethje, who should never have to speak, Chandler should be putting over Gaethje, and Gaethje should be building Chandler. We are partners. I either take it all or you take it all. But we together, two-on-one -on -one power and numbers, keep this son of a bitch who isn't even in the country out of our mouths, out of the dialogue, and out of the thoughts and minds of the fans, pundits, and promoters. Agree? Agree. Shake hands. Walk off. And it's one of these things where I don't know how anything could be so obvious and how anything could be so clear and that mistake still being made. Because if I am to let the fights and the punches and the kicks speak for themselves, okay. But I have never done that in the history of the sport. There is no such thing as fair. I'm not gonna look at Islam's run that he's been on or his big, beautiful record and compare it against yours. I have two former number one contenders, one of them that used to hold the strap, they're going to go to head-to-head -to -head at the Garden.
That has to mean something, but if you don't want me to make it mean something, and you want to bring in everything else that you're talking about, including the fact that he's here for a long time and you just said that you're not, should I take you at your word? Should I default back to a ranking system? Should I look at an overall record? Should I listen to what my own commentary team is telling me? Or should I let you and your partner, who still have three days left in the media maker of the world, figure this out together and quit being dumbasses?